Hi guys, in the previous videos of this tutorial series, we have configured our Linux server to host our Node.js application. We've configured traverse proxy, load balancing, HTTPS, as well as some aspects of security. In fact, almost the same configuration can not only be used for Node.js, but also for other technologies like Java or .NET, with the minor difference of how exactly you build and run the application itself. So before we move on, let's recap how we build our application right now. The process is very simple. We take files from our development workstation, our archive them and send over SSH to our application server, to our CentOS server. Afterwards, on our Linux server, we download all the required dependencies and finally we start our app with the help of PM2. And this setup works great because it's so simple, however, there's plenty of ways to make it even better. Let's look together at how the second version of our build system will look like. Firstly, there will be a development workstation and an application server. However, the first change is we don't want our app server to do anything except running the application itself. It should not be building an application. It should not be downloading dependencies or running tests. The only responsibility of the server will be to run the application. There are many reasons to build elsewhere. It is more secure, it is more resource effective and more reliable. And if it happens that your build is so complex, it takes all the resources. You don't want your production application to run slow or crash because of the build. So where will the build happen then? Development workstation is not an option. So we will introduce a separate build server just to do that, to build our application. It will take our application files, download the required dependencies and perform any additional operations that might be needed. For example, if your frontend is written in React, it will run Webpack build. Once the build is done, the build server can run unit tests or execute any additional tools to check or optimize the build. And finally, our new server will deploy the build, following pretty much the same process as we followed before. We'll upload files via SSH to an application server, extract them and rerun PM2 processes. Now, the last piece of a puzzle is where exactly the build server will take the source code from. A naive way would be to receive it from development workstation, but there is much better way, of course. Our code should be stored in a version control system and, well, versioned. And for that, we'll be using GitHub. Now, when a programmer updates an application, Git creates a commit that contains reference to a specific version of a code. That commit is then pushed to GitHub, and GitHub will notify our server that there is a new code in a repository. That will trigger a new build. And if that build is successful, it is automatically deployed to your server. In practical terms, it means that all you need to do is commit and push your code, wait around 30 seconds, and the new version of application is now running on your server. The beauty of this strategy is that everything is versioned. The source code is versioned because we're using GitHub. And the builds themselves, the packages that we are deploying to our environment are also versioned and saved on a hard drive of a build server. This build approach is much more reliable than our first version. And with some minor tweaks and variations, it is used in production by many teams that I've worked with. In order to get there, we'll need to configure another server, which is a build server. So let's have a very quick look what exactly, what are the components that we will need to configure. First of all, the whole build automation and management process will not happen manually. There's already a software that is great for doing things like automating builds. And the software is called Jenkins. Jenkins is a Java application, so in order to run it, we will need to install JDK, Java Development Kit. Since we are building JavaScript apps, Node.js is a must, so we will have to install it too. And also, Jenkins is a web application, so you access it through the web interface just like a normal website. However, in order to secure your web application, HTTP is a great idea, so we will repeat some of the steps that we did in the previous videos. We will install Nginx, request a certificate from Let's Encrypt, and configure Nginx as a reverse proxy to our Jenkins. So implementing all these features in a build system will allow us not only to have an automated build, as we have right now, but to move to a model of a continuous integration, continuous delivery, or even continuous deployment. Hopefully now you are inspired to continue our DevOps journey. So guys, I hope that you are as excited as I am about this next part of a tutorial and if you are, please subscribe. That helps my channel grow and acts as a great motivation to create new videos. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next videos where we will start to configure our build server.